Good evening. <laughs> Our special call city council meeting for September 16, 2021 is now called to order. Tonight, our prayer and pledge will be led by Council for uh, District Four Councilwoman Mr. Christian, Ms. Christian Ishihara. Please rise. Would you please join me in prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your many blessings. We thank you for the ability to be here tonight. We thank you for our health. We pray for the health and the safety of our community. We ask for your wisdom and your guidance in all of our actions here tonight and in every day of our lives moving forward. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Kristen. I do not have any community recognition or employee recognition at this time tonight. And I probably won't do that for a while until we become a little bit more um, steady on where we stand with things going on in the community with COVID. So there's no point in uh, doing things that we don't have to at this point in time. So just so you know, that's where we are for now. Uh, we do have a presentation tonight. Uh, proclamation recognizes the 75th anniversary of Turner University. Mr. Randy Yakeley, Assistant Vice President for Development, will be present to receive this presentation. Please come forward, sir. Yeah. How are you, sir? Good. Thank you. Nice to see you. And you're kin to one of our wonderful gentlemen out here. You're Richard's father. I am. Pleasure to have you here, sir. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Pleasure to have you. Thank you for being here. Laterno University Sword Day, September 17, 2021. Whereas Laterno University has requested the mayor by proclamation to recognize September 17, 2021 as Laterno University Sword Day in the city of Longview. 75 years ago, on September 17, 1946, Laterno Technical Institute took off and started to soar with its first official day of classes. As part of Laterno's 75th anniversary celebration, we recognize this as SOAR Day, which will become an annual occasion to remember the legacy of R.G. and Evelyn Laterno. That SOAR Day also recognizes the faculty and staff who planted their lives here, invested in students, and made an eternal difference in the city of Longview. So now, therefore, I, Andy Mack, by the authority vested me as mayor of the city of Longview, do proclaim September 17, 2021 as Laterno University SOAR Day in Longview. Thank you, sir, very much for all that Laterno has done for our community. Uh, Laterno is a staple in our uh, in our town that it's the hidden gem and you have, that university has touched so many lives in this community not just from Longview but from all around the country people come from all over the country to go to Laterno University so it's a testament to what we have going on here and it's a testament to what y'all do at Laterno so thank you sir keep up the sore day the Laternos are they're, they're pillars of our community forever so we thank you for all that all that y'all have done thank you very much thank you. thank you sir hold on let's get a quick picture Come on, let's get We're to citizen comment. I have one card, Mr. Robin McLemore. Good evening, everyone, uh, council and mayor, everyone that's here. Robin McLemore, 208 North Green Street, Longview, Texas. Uh, on the behalf of Heritage Tower, we want to say thank you for the lights. Thank you. And make sure you tell all the workers, the essential workers, thank you as well. Those who are behind the scene and those who have their hands on making this happen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I have no other speaker cards, so we'll go to public safety update. Chief Bishop. Mayor Mack, Council Members, Mr. Bonds, thanks for giving me the opportunity to provide an update since my last one back in June, I believe it was. I want to start out by recognizing two of our employees that just recently retired at the end of August. 
uh, Lieutenant Paul Hickey, who was over our criminal investigations division, retired after 17 years of service, and Sergeant Doug Brinkley, who was the sergeant over our crimes against persons, retired uh, after 22 years of service. Both individuals have gone into uh, private business uh, for themselves. So I want to congratulate them and more importantly thank them for their years of service to the department and uh, to the citizens of our community and uh, wish them uh, well in their future endeavors. Last week we had the opportunity on a couple different occasions to uh, remember the events of September 11th, 2001. Uh, I want to uh, give a special thanks and I know Chief Steelman is not here tonight and he wanted me to echo the same, uh, is to thank Highland Pines Nursing Home, the administrators and the staff there. Uh, on Friday, uh, September 10th, they provided the first responders uh, with a drive-through breakfast. So we want to reach out to them and, and thank them for uh, remembering September 11th and taking time to uh, recognize the first responders. Also want to do the same for David Cooley at Boss Crane later that afternoon. Uh, he held a uh, drive-through lunch for police, fire, medical personnel out at Boss Crane. Uh, it was another, uh, another local business that showed their appreciation. Just want to thank them uh, for remembering September 11, 2001 and um, supporting our local uh, first responders here. We've had the opportunity over the last couple of months to commission a few new officers. I uh, want to introduce to you Christian Gallegos, uh, Brian Preston. Uh, they had just recently graduated from the Tyler Junior College Police Academy. Uh, they're currently in their field training phase of training right now. Uh, Daryl Youngblood was part of the three uh, that graduated from the academy and he too is in uh, field training. Uh, yesterday we commissioned another new officer on the right, Jasmine Norton. Um, she comes to us as a seven year veteran from the Shreveport Police Department and that's her husband Jerome uh, who also was a Shreveport officer that we hired back about two months ago. So uh, we have both of them on board with us now. And, we're excited for these new officers and uh, starting their career here with Long Beach Police Department. Uh, I want to remind everybody about National Night Out. Uh, we had the, uh, the pre-registration drive through at Mod Cobb uh, a few days ago. We had 31 parties registered. We're now over 50 parties. So October 5th, Tuesday, will be National Night Out if you'd like to register your neighborhood for a block party. You can go to longviewtexas.gov slash NNO. We'd love to have you. And I'll be happy to answer any questions. Any questions for Chief Bishop? <clears throat> thank you, sir. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> Council, we're not a consent agenda. Are you not items consent agendas that we would like to pull off for separate discussion? Mayor, I'd like to pull I. I. Pull I. I. Yes, sir. Okay. I'd like to ask a couple of questions about why. About why? Okay, hold on just a second. Let me. I know it's a long consent agenda, so question about why. Okay, anything else? Okay, so we'll start with I I. Mr. Carpenter, who, what, when, where, and how? I don't understand anything about it. I don't understand what it's supposed to do. Uh, the packet that came with it left me even more confused than the actual uh, brief summary write-up. Okay, I'll start. Uh, in a uh, meeting a month or so ago, council did approve a contract with Hickerson Transportation Services for the uh, management of the transit system. However, in the RFP that we issued to, that we used to select Hickerson, it had an option for all of the proposers to protest the decision or the procurement methods that were taking place. So uh, after we had brought it to council, the protest came through from RATP Dev, who is the current manager, managing company. So we have to, the RFP that we used is a model that the federal government requires us to use since it's federal funds that we use to operate the public transportation uh, 
agency here at Longview Transportation, uh, Longview Transit. So because of that, we have had to develop a, a committee made up of other city employees other than the city employees that made up the selection committee. So I know that's kind of confusing, but- uh, Yes, sir, that's the reason I raised the question. Yeah, so three of our employees are going to form a committee to review the procurement process and then they will make the final decision of whether it needs to start over or not, so. So it will either go forward as we approved it or it'll come back under another proposal or, I, or go back out for bid? I suppose it depends on the final decision of the committee, what they say, so. Amanda, do you have anything to add to that? No, sir. Um, that, uh, we had to put in the RFP what our protest procedures are on page 16. And so we are, um, it says that we need to appoint our protest committee. And so um, that is what we are trying to do here. And I if think, you have any qu other questions, yeah, I'd be glad. I think this resolution um, authorizes that the the committee have the final decision in writing on behalf of the city. So that's that's how that'll go yes, down. Sir. So. Mm -hmm. Does that answer your question, Mr. Carpenter? Uh, yes, Mayor, I, I really think that should come back to council. That's just what my thoughts are. Well, I think we already denied it. This is just their appeal process procedurally. Yeah, right? We've already that. awarded the contract right. to Hickerson. Right. This mm -hmm. is just but that that contract could be turned over. But in theory, I guess it if, could be. But if uh, this group, the current manager, wins on appeal, correct? If they did, yes. Then, you, you, as opposed to the the weight being on those three people, I think the weight should be back on the council that we're going from. Vendor I think we, to Vendor B. we'd have that discussion then. I mean, because that would just void their contract right. that we approved, right. and then it would have to come back through us it for the next. Has to come back to us, right? Well, it says that the the final. Where did I read that? To take all actions. Well, to either keep keep with the, what we approved or not, right, Jim? And if, and if they don't approve like what correct. we approve, it has to come back to us, right? So they couldn't change anything. We approved it and they say, yes, that was good or no, it wasn't because they have a procedure to appeal that they're taking advantage of. Nothing's but, gonna happen without our approval other than what we've already approved, Tim. So if it if we stay with Hickerson, mm -hmm. regardless of what this team does, we're good well, to go. If they decide that the procurement process was appropriate and say yes. that it's good, we'll stay with Hickerson. Right? And if they come back and say it's not, then First it comes, back, it comes to back to us. All us. starts over. Yes. We start Perfect. over at square one. Okay. Well, that makes sense now, but yeah. it doesn't. No, I, I get it. It's a good question. <laughs> it's a lot of legal words. Yeah. yeah. Thank I, you. I, I, Thanks. I corrected. Me and Jim talked about this earlier this week, didn't we, Jim? <laughs> oh, no, that's right. Never we did. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mayor, I have one other question, and I've already visited with uh, Mr. Bonds and Mr. Uh, uh, McPhee, and this is a Jim question. Uh, in this large consent agenda, which I understand, or whatnot, uh, there are no state statutes that prohibit us from spending 21, 22 money in the 2021 budget cycle. Is that correct? We're, fi we're fine as as they're presented. We're good to go. Okay, so just, just had to be from appropriated budget. Because we're not to the new budget on the calendar, Dr. Mack. And right. Okay. It thanks. gives them the authority to be able to act October 1st, so it gets them ahead instead of having to wait. It gets the process so they can begin the process of purchasing the beginning of October. We actually did, we do this every year, actually. Well, I, I, you know, yeah. and that, I understand that, and, and of course, being the rookie, but I just want to make sure we weren't going to go out tomorrow and start writing POs. And I know. We well, stay with the statutes. Budget year. Right. October okay. 1st. Thank you. We got that. Okay, Ms. Hichar, number Y. Yeah, I guess, ride. yes, I guess uh, that'll be for Chief Green since okay. Chief Stillman's not here. I got, I got the answer to that. I talked to Chief Stillman. These three generators that we're getting are going to training center. They're going to station three and they're going to, sad as I had to say, administration. They have to have, they have to keep their little toes warm down there. That was my question, where they're going and then are they replacing yeah. or are they new? This will be added to station one. So the back half of station one is the actual fire station that fronts administration. When the station is generator comes on, we don't get anything over on the administration side. Mm -hmm. So only half the building is actually mm -hmm. equipped 
to, for backup power. Right? Okay. So it would be partially new, partially replacement on that one? No, that would be brand new generator. Okay. Totally new. And then the others would be replacements or oh, new? Be It'll new. be a... Oh, they'd all be brand Station new? three will be a replacement because it's not large enough to support the phase, the phase okay. three in that station. And the addition to station two is the WMD building that we have in the back with all the specialized equipment. It doesn't have any power when the power goes off. It's the, it's the building behind station two that has all the specialized, the boats and the, <coughs> all the extra. Okay. Yeah, I was curious just because I assumed that we had generators at those places. So I didn't know if they were new or if we had not sufficient. These will be addition. The, the one for stage three will be a replacement, so, so it'll be able to support that station. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <coughs> Any other questions of the consent agenda? Is there a second? second? We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Now to zoning, have a public hearing held to consider application Z21-14. Um, Ms. Choi. Thank you, Mayor Mack, uh, members of council, and Mr. Bonds. Uh, the applicant is requesting a rezone of a six acre tract located on uh, 3901 Pine Tree Road. The applicant is proposing um, to rezone from agricultural to single family four. The applicant is proposing to sub this, uh, subdivide this lot into two lots to build single family residential homes. Planning and Zoning Commission, along with staff, recommends <coughs> approval of this request. I'd be happy to answer any questions at this time. Ms. Troy, I know you said it. I just, I missed it. What, how many, how, what's the size of that lot? Um, it is a six acre track. Okay, yes, they're gonna put two structures on a six acre track? Yes, sir. Wonderful. Okay, this is a public hearing, which is now open. Any discussion, Ms. Choi? Any questions? Public hearing is now closed. Is there a motion? Move to approve. Second. 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 A motion, a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, we have a public hearing held to consider uh, S21-09. Ms. Choi. Thank you. The applicant is requesting a specific use permit to allow for a one-family dwelling in heavy commercial zoning district. A specific use permit is required for one-family dwellings in that zoning district to ensure no negative impact on surrounding properties. There currently is a one family dwelling located to the east of this property and then also to the north of this property. Henderson Street is a local roadway and is maintained by the City of Longview Planning and Zoning Commission along with staff recommends approval of this request. I'd be happy to answer your questions at this time. This does require a public hearing which is now open. Any questions, Ms. Choi, or comments? Public hearing is now closed. Is there a motion? I make a motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Public hearing held to consider uh, S21-10. Ms. Choi. Thank you. The applicant is requesting a specific use permit for a restaurant with a coffee shop with a drive through window in general retail zoning district. A specific use permit is required for drive through windows within general retail zoning district to ensure no negative impact on surrounding properties. Uh, McCann Road along with Loop 281 are both TxDOT roadways and uh, both are arterial roadways. Uh, retail uses such as this is appropriate along this roadway as long as access management was followed. Uh, there will be no additional driveways along both roadways. They're actually closing one driveway. Staff finds the proposed zoning change is consistent with the future land use map and surrounding uses. Planning and Zoning Commission along with staff recommends approval of this request. I'd be happy to answer any questions at this time. This also requires a public hearing which is now open. Any questions or comments of Ms. Choi? Ms. Choi, was the, the stacking uh, the stacking requirement put in on this property? Yes, sir, it was. Thank you. Mm -hmm. If there are no other questions, public hearing is now closed. Is there a motion? Move to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. We have a public hearing held to consider a request filed by Johnson and Pace for an abandonment of a 15-foot alley right of way. Ms. Joy. Thank you. Uh, the applicant is requesting to abandon a portion of a 15-foot alleyway uh, that is unimproved that consists of 0 .0879 acres located north of Whaley Street and east of Methven in order to incorporate these streets into uh, or incorporate the alley into the adjacent lots for a development project. All franchise utility companies along with city staff have reviewed and signed off on this proposed abandonment. Staff does recommend approval of this request. I'd be happy to answer any questions at this time. This requires a public hearing, which is now open. Any questions of Ms. Choi? So, 
Ms. Troy, that's just an alleyway that just doesn't really lead anywhere, correct? Yes, sir. The, uh, so there, the alleyway actually used to go all the way through to St. Anne Street, but it was never um, it was never developed, so it was just an alley right of way, um, sure. no pavement. Yes, sir. Sure. So I'd like to move to approve. Well, the public oh, hearing is now closed. A motion, Mr. White. Second. Yes, sir. And we have motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Ms. Troy. Now consider a resolution uh, authorizing the direct city manager or city manager designee to do a change order number one, increasing contract cost of 2.8 million um, to bar construction. Mr. Archer. Yeah, Mayor, Council, uh, Mr. Bonds, good evening. Uh, we had a significant failure of our, uh, our um, weir trough at clarifier number three out of the wastewater treatment plant. It's a fairly decent sized structure, as you can see, 18 foot deep. Um, 30 years old. We have four of these at the facility, so one of them being down reduces our capabilities by 25%. The good news is that we have bar construction that's currently on site working on the headworks project, working on the bar screen in the grit chamber. These guys have a lot of experience with wastewater facilities. And so what we what we recommend is that we issue change order number one to bar construction in the amount of $218,000 to allow them to complete that repair on that clarifier. Um, them being in town and being there is gonna allow that to get done much quicker uh, and reduce costs. We're not gonna have the mobilization that we normally have. So with that, I'll answer any questions. Any question, Mr. Archer, on this? Where, where exactly is this at? It's at the wastewater treatment plants, you know, um, on South Loop. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Red I, I, that's where I thought it would be. Yeah. Yeah, and that circle where <laughs> you see the red circle, yeah. that's that's clarifier number the three. One. Okay. And that weir trough has just collapsed. It pulled out of the wall. All the supports are gone on one side. It's pretty significant. Get it repaired. There you go. Okay. And yes, Mr. Carpenter. So we had. Help me understand this. Bar constructors was already on site. They're on site. Yes. Already. Already. Performing. They're doing the, the Headworks project that y'all approved November the, of 2020 yeah. for that for the grit chamber and the bar screen. So they're there working on a $2.8 million project. And so something has failed. So, so if you look at the two yellow boxes, see right there, see the two yellow boxes? That's where they're working. Yes, sir. The red circle <laughs> is that clarifier that has collapsed on us. So and this is, in, in theory, this is not a change order to that contract? Not to doing those those in, improvements there, no. We approved $2.8 million back last year, Tim, for them yep. to do the yellow boxes. Right. We had this clarifier that has failed. We need to get it repaired. They're already there, so we're just gonna add $218,000 to their already existing contract because they're already on site to repair it while they're there. Okay, so theoretically it's not a, I mean, it's a $218,000 change order but it's actually a two hundred eighteen thousand dollar addition emergency. We got to we have this. to repair it, yes. right? And they're there, and there's no reason to to so down break down and come back. They're right. they're we, already we there. Yeah, we don't want to go into the spring having this reduction in our capabilities. No, my question, my original question was if they had bid two eight seventy eight, and then they came back to you for two hundred and twelve on that contract, I had a problem with it. Okay, but yeah, if this no, is new, it's it's good. Yeah. Any other question, Mr. Archer? If not, is there a motion? Move to approve. Second. second. We have a motion to second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item B has been pulled. We will do the, we'll discuss that at a later date. Uh, we now to item C, consider a resolution adopting a five year CIP program. Mr. Bradley. Good evening, Mayor, City Council. Glad to be here tonight. Be presenting uh, next year's capital improvement program for your approval. Uh, as you know, we do these every year. The staff gets together, reviews all our priority list, our master plans, our uh, comprehensive plan, and uh, reassigns the projects, looks at the funding, and makes the recommendations to the council for next year's approval. This is last year's. Most of these are in design. The top one, Fairmont, we have that one under construction. The fifth and sixth high in Moberly, we've just bid that one. <clears throat> That'll be awarded hopefully next month. And that's the 
current status with those projects. What we're recommending for next year, drainage, actually have good news. ARPA funds is available for a substantial number of our drainage projects. Uh, we have two. We have one at uh, Alta Street. We also have one at Avenue B. Alta Street uh, is $200,000. It's associated with some homes that are below the street and had some repetitive home flooding. We can make some street upgrades and help them out. The other project is Avenue B, just south of Kenwood, just south of Fairmont. We have some deteriorated culverts uh, to replace those. Those are old steel pipes. Another drainage project, but it's related to our uh, Mod Cobb Activity Center, right between the JC Drive and the rodeo, we have a lot of drainage issues. So we've had that identified in our master plan for the activity center. Uh, thanks to the Sabine River Authority, they said they would fund a portion of it. Uh, ARPA was uh, designated for this, so we can cover this million dollar project. Another project uh, that's in our master plan for parks is the Cargill Trail restrooms. That's a prefabricated <laughs> restroom. We've always had a, an idea of putting something up there at Cargill. Now we're able to do that with general fund, 175,000. Also some more partnership. Uh, just recently got a grant from NetRMA. Uh, a signal that just became warranted, you know, needs a signal at uh, George Ritchie and McCann, right there near Dollar General Warehouse. $400,000, uh, Greg County, uh, Ledco and I uh, don't know why I'm coming blank on that. Tech Stop, we've got a three way partnership. Well, we, we can all come together, $200,000 grant, and uh, make that happen. By being able to do that signal, that helps us do another signal. We can pay for this one with the general fund. This has been identified for several years, been warranted at Eastman and Birdsong, just a very critical intersection that needs. Uh, signal improvements, so we're recommending that one. Uh, presented this previously, uh, we're st still a project. Uh, last year you deferred the funding, but now that we have enough money in our utility CIPs, we wanna go ahead and get it on the books to, to go ahead and, and have that ready for the construction. But George Ritchie, the relocation and the widening of that uh, stretch of highway by TxDOT requires us to relocate some utilities. There is some funding available from TxDOT, just like we've done on other projects, to reimburse us for the water line project for, for that. Our line replacement program that we do every year, we've got uh, two projects really in relation to new work that we're doing to just kind of coordinate those utilities that are old to be replaced before new construction. The first one's at South High and Sabine Street. TxDOT will be starting that bridge replacement on High in about six months, so we need to move a water and sewer line. And then Moberly Avenue will be doing some water main improvements before we do our Moberly Complete Street program. Another project that we've had uh, on our books, water uh, treatment plant at Lake Cherokee, water quality issues, just trying to make improvements to water treatment, modernize. Uh, one of our recommendations was to make lime system modifications. The saturators shown, that's kind of like the preferred <coughs> method. There's all kinds of ways to do this, but this is what we're recommending, 1.74 million for the water utility CIP funds. Also able to make some use of some CDBG funds. We're always able to have a project for, from CDBG, and this year we're, we're looking at Berkeley. Those are primarily street improvements, utilities, drainage, sewer, um, approximately 256,000. CDBG always helps us out. They give us about 80% of that. We're able to fund the rest with the utility CIP funds. This is in conjunction, we just break the sewer out separately since it's, a se it's own separate fund, but this is the TxDOT project, George Ritchie, in accordance with widening that project from 
State Highway 300 to the city limit, there's 1.8 million identified for sewer uh, relocation and improvements. I guess I hit all. Our line program for sewer, I'll make sure I didn't skip some. There. As well, on the, the high street bridge replacement, we've got the sewer there. That's on that project over at South Eastman. Cotton and Club, there's a sewer that's not running at, you know, it's over capacity. That's what it is. That needs to be upgraded, needs to be replaced. Down on Maladin Drive, we've got another issue. Uh, with uh, primarily, I would say, uh, some of the storm damage that we've had, some of the heavy rains that we've had through the past year, replace a crossing there. That's about $900,000. And that summarizes the program for the year uh, that we're recommending, uh, almost uh, 12 million, 11.7 .7 million, 12 projects. Uh, and I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Any questions, Mr. Bradley? Uh, Avenue B in Fairmont, how is that going to work in with Fairmont going on right now? We're going to have to wait to, until the work, the road work's done. Okay. So that'd be, we have to close Avenue B to do that work. So we, we would, we, we'd want to wait. So if we're yeah, on that's schedule. The main, that's the main arterial. They have to go around with the one-way section right now. It would be bad. Uh, also on George Ritchie, that's south of 300, right? All the, the, the improvements that you're going to make on George Ritchie? It's west. Isn't that well, west? It's between 300 well, I mean, and, yeah, and 1845. West, west 300, yeah. And then it goes to the city limit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's not going toward the high school at all. Is it's the opposite direction. Right there okay. where George Ritchie and 300 come together, yeah. to the right or to the east is the high school where yeah. they have the four lane, the nice road. To the west is where we're going to go all the way over to. Yeah, but well, that, like that's kind of the way I, I thought. I just wanted to, I wasn't sure whether it was south or west, but anyway. Yeah, it's just okay. west of there. But that would stop the city limits. Yes, yes, sir. It stops at the city limit. That's. Text dots widening all the way. To It'll go all the way to 271 eventually. Right. Yeah. But yeah. To 271. We stop at the city limits. Text dot takes over. The county takes over after after city limits. Yeah. The state's going all the way to 42. Right. This is just our utility portion. We just go to the city limit. I mean, our water line connects at the city limit because we have a meter to wide open. So that's why it goes all the way to city limit. So that that is that Pine Tree Road that you're going to 22. Yes, sir. The, the, okay. the larger one there Past at the end, it. pine yeah. tree. Okay. Any other questions, Mr. Bradley? If not, is there a motion? Move to approve. I make a motion. Second. And, and we have a second. The motion is second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Any opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Bradley, thank you for your presentation. Thank you for the thought you put in through this. You, we can see that the wheels are turning. There's a plan, and it's nice to have a plan. I, I can remember. 15, 20 years ago when I was on the council and the CI, people would come up and I'm like, where, where do they get, where do you get all these things from? It's such as just like pulled out of air, but I can see your plan. And so it's very nice to have a, have that concise road we're going to follow. Thank you, sir. All right. Good Thank job. Thank you very much. We're now out of the community interest. Um, Mr. Carpenter. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the East Texas Food Bank in conjunction with Gregton has uh, continued. In fact, today they had a, uh, another successful drive first and third Thursday of every month. It's free, it's no qualification. Goes from 11 to one. Uh, good effort, 255 families helped the previous drive. I'm proud to report that we have a new tenant coming to the old Safeway building on the loop, which will uh, be a nice addition there. And I'm also proud to announce that the uh, that the uh, shopping center on Pine Tree Road that has been a high sore for so many years is actually underway and they've dried it back in and the work's progressing nicely. On a personal note, I want to thank Dwayne wherever he went. Uh, Mayor, we had about two thirds of a tree hanging over the real road and Rodden interchange. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. I don't know what we did today, but it looked like we had sent the army over there because uh, this tree was, I don't know how it was staying in the air, Doc. It was just kind of like, mm. but uh, we got that done and I really appreciate you uh, getting on that. So uh, thank you, Mayor, that's what happened. Uh, can we have a motion to excuse Ms. Snotty for this evening? So moved. 
Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Wade? Uh, sure. First, the, uh, the Moberly Avenue complete street project. I would like to invite all of the citizens of District 3 out to, uh, to be a part of this on Thursday, September 30th, just a discussion of where the project is going and where we are to this date. Um, and also, it's a great opportunity to be able to get some input. So September 30th is one, and then also another one on October 12th. And the first one's at Beltra Center parking lot, appears to be, and the second one's at Southwark Community Park. And they both will start at 7.30. Uh, that's the first thing. And uh, October 7th. There's no slide for this. I have two announcements actually that there's no slide for. But um, we have October 7th, downtown Longview, five to eight. It's the arts, what is it? The new murals that are being presented, downtown Longview on this date. Please come out, those murals are beautiful by the way. I've had a chance to see them all. They're really nice. And the artists that completed those as well. Um, also, starting today, September 15th to October 15th is National Hispanic Heritage Month, and I wanted to recognize that and to also thank the uh, Hispanic community for their contributions to making Longview a great place to live. That's it for me, Mayor. Thank Mack. you, sir. Mr. Ishihara. Nothing for me. Mr. Wright. Nothing tonight. Mr. Pirtle. Yes, I want to uh, thank most of the people over there off of Fairmont for their patience that we've been going through for the last four months, actually. Everybody thought we started at the start of school, but it's been a little bit longer than that. I stopped by there two or three times a week when those guys are digging those holes out. Some of them holes are eight to 10 feet deep, and there's numerous, numerous old water lines, sewer lines, uh, everything else running through there, gas lines and stuff. The infrastructure they're putting in is time consuming and they don't know what they're running into when they run into it, so it really slows them down. So I want to, uh, anybody that's got any questions, they're more than welcome to call me on my cell number, city cell number, and I'll address that. And then the other thing is uh, the Arboretum, their concert series starts on the 30th of this month, so everybody's welcome to start attending that. Progress is often painful, but it's certainly wonderful when it's all said and done. So be patient, Longview. It's nice to see that we can have progress in our community because the things that we're doing are going to make lasting differences for all the regions of our of our city. Mr. Bonds. Yeah, a couple of things. District 3, Councilwoman Nona Snotty, residents, volunteers, and city staff took part in a 12-week project cleaning up the Stamper Park neighborhood, which culminated and a volunteer work weekend on August 28 and 29, as you can see in the pictures. And during this time, property owners were encouraged to participate with city departments and volunteers to remove junk and litter, junk vehicles to mow and weed eat, overgrown areas, to cut and remove brush. Uh, we have a lot, of more, a lot more photographs at longviewtexas.gov backslash CL. You can see a lot of the other photos there and so I'd like to extend my thanks and to all the staff members and especially the volunteers that helped out there. Uh, one more thing regretfully I uh, want to announce that uh, Justin Cure, our information systems director has tenured his resignation. Justin has uh, worked here for 16 years and has done just a fantastic job first as our first GIS manager and uh, then is our first director of information services and uh, he has left some large shoes to fill and uh, while we begin our search for the next director josh gamble is our infrastructure manager will be serving in the interim role and both those gentlemen are here so um, justin and his wife are going to be relocating to santa barbara california where he will work for the city there and be with their first it director so I'd like to uh, wish Justin and Melissa all the best of luck, and uh, we'll miss you both. Justin, you've done a phenomenal job. <laughs> <laughs> uh,
you're going to be greatly missed, my friend. But we, we, we do wish you the best. Okay, well, a real quick COVID update. Um, oh, wait, before that, we'll do that at the end. Downtown Live, our Friday night concert series. Downtown Live starts back this Friday with the Matt Coach, Coach Band. Join us from Five Bated Heritage Plaza for live music, food, trucks, beverages, and more. And I know we're not out promoting large gatherings, but this is an outdoor event. You can social distance, you can wear your mask, you can bring your lawn chairs, and you can enjoy a nice concert outside while still being safe. So I'm comfortable promoting that because I think we can do that without any um, ill effects at this point in time. So if you feel free to go out there uh, Friday night, go enjoy downtown live. It's always a lot of fun and see lots of people in Longview out there. Our city council meetings note that we will have one meeting in October, which will be held October 21st um, and then on to November. So our COVID update is, it, it, it doesn't change much lately. Hospitals are still pretty much at capacity. We're still seeing lots of new cases every day. We're still having to experience um, shortages in staffing in, in every area of the hospitals. And I think both hospitals are now to the point where they are not doing any elective procedures that require uh, inpatient uh, stays overnight because there's no place to put them. They're still doing elective procedures that can go outpatient, but I think they've all halted the inpatient elective procedures, which, you know, that affects us all. So, you know, we got to do our part. Um, there's still vaccinations available if you want it. Uh, go get a vaccine. It's available any, any and all over town. So you can get them anywhere you want to. And uh, remember to social distance when you can, wear a mask when you can, wash your hands when you can, and uh, take care of yourselves and take care of your neighbors. So I appreciate you all being here. Until then, uh, we are adjourned.